Alrighty, and here we are looking at question number 90 on practice test number two. And if you are following along online with me and you let your timer go past your 45 minutes, you ran out of time before submitting your test. I'm not going to turn this in now because this is just my little account where I do practice tests. Um, you want to submit your test and then go back in to practice test number two and scroll down until you get to section three, which is our math, our quantitative reasoning section. Um, and once you're here, so that you have access to your reference sheets when needed, you can look at how many questions you have remaining on the test and make sure as soon as you log in, you handle your letter of the day business and make sure you answer questions where you're for sure of the answer. So every time you do this practice test, your score is going up. And I want you to be able to explain the steps for these questions that you're, that you're getting to memorize. I want you to be able to explain the steps to the questions and the reasoning of how to solve it, um, either to uh, another person in your house, a sibling, a parent, a friend. Uh, if you don't have a person that wants to listen to you talk some math, then a stuffed animal, a pet, somebody who will listen while you teach them some math. Like I'm here at my house just talking to the computer, talking math. You at home, you need to do some talking math as well rather than um, just watching these videos. That's enough lecture about that for now. And I got my letter of the day in, right? I'm just doing this so you see how much I'm stressing that that's important. I do not want you to leave any blank answers when you take your test on Saturday. All right, number 90. A flower shop always chooses a different type of flower at random to, cheat, to feature in fr its front display case. The shop sells 22 different types of flowers in total, including roses. If the store is out of stock of sunflowers and orchids, then our question's asking, what is the chance that the shop will feature roses in the display case on that day? So we want to know our chance of roses out of, this is kind of like question number, like question number 81. We want to know our chance of the store picking roses out of the total amount of types of flowers. So roses is only one type of flower and the shop sells 22 different types of flowers, but it's out of stock of sunflowers and orchids. So that's two types of flowers that's out of stock. <coughs> Excuse me. So our 22 minus two for our denominator, we got one out of 20 types of flowers. And then when we're taking our fraction and turning it into a percent, we need to make the denominator of our fraction change to a 100. Now, how do we get 20 to turn into 100? You've got to multiply by 5. And what's the rule for equivalent fractions? Whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So also 1 times 5 is going to be 5, 
and then that number on top of 100, that is your percent. <coughs> and now number 91, Which points satisfy both of the following equations? So, y equals 2x minus 5, y equals x squared minus 13. Both of these equations have the y's isolated, so there's something we can do. We can take this and make it equal to this, right? Because 2x minus 5 equals y equals x squared minus 13, right? They both equal y, so we can just make them equal to each other. And now we can solve for x. So I would move my 2x to the other side and, and get a 0 over on this side, over on the left. So I want 0 equals something here. So to get me there, I'm going to subtract my 2x on both sides. I didn't put it under anything here because there's no other plain x. So make that cancel out. And then I want to get rid of my minus 5 by adding 5 on both sides of the equal sign. And now I can simplify this side. x squared, there's no other x squared. I'm going to move this minus 2x up here. And then we've got negative 13 plus 5. The signs are different, so we're going to do what with those two numbers? Subtract them. So just 13 minus 5 is 8. And then will it be positive or negative? And it's going to be negative because the negative number is bigger. So now that I have all that, I can clean up my space a little here. And just focus on this. 0 equals x squared minus 2x minus 8. So I need to say, okay, how can I factor this to two binomials where, right, this is how we do it in class. We make our little area model and we have x times something, x times something. Um, x plus or minus something, x plus or minus something, and we multiply the things and we put them inside of our, our area model. And I know inside of here I need x squared and I need a negative 8, and I need these two boxes to add up to be negative 2. So in order for me to multiply two numbers and get a negative, I need one number to be a negative and the other one to be a positive. So out of my answer choices, since we're solving for x, right, I need to look at the answer choices where we got a positive and a negative for x. And these don't have a negative for the x, so those are both out. So my numbers are either going to be negative 4 or positive 4, and 2 or negative 2. And I need to find out what gives me a negative 2. That would be if my negative was bigger. So negative 4 times positive 2 gives me x times negative 4, negative 4x, x times 2, 2x, x squared minus 2x minus 8. So this is correct. x minus 4 and x plus 2 equals zero. 
Now I'm cleaning up my workspace again. And what number for x makes this equal to 0? What minus 4, right? So that would be when x equals positive 4 and x equals negative 2. So I need the positive 4 and the negative 2 to be my x value. And that's it for question number 91. I think that might be as far as we got up to in class. But um, while I got you on the video, let's go ahead and look at one more question. Number 92 says, which of the following lines has the greatest slope? So we need to find the slope for A, B, C, D, and which one has the greatest value. So I'm just going to put M equals, M equals, M equals, and M equals. So if my y-intercept for A is 1, so answer choice A, my work, y-intercept is 1. So that means when x is 0, y is 1, and it also has the point, 2, 3, and our slope formula says change in y over change in x, and my y goes um, up 2, and my x goes over 2, so my slope is 1, not a very big slope. And then answer choice B says a line that passes through the points 0, negative 5, and 1, negative 2. And change in y over change in x. My y goes up 3 while my x goes over 1. So my slope is 3. That's bigger. You're out. And then C. says a line with an x-intercept of negative 1. So when y is 0, x is negative 1, and passes through the point 3, 20, change in y over change in x, my y goes up 20, while my x goes up 1, 2, 3, 4, slope is 5, that's it. And last one, Answer choice D says um, x-intercept of negative 2, so when y is 0, x is negative 2, and a y-intercept of 8, so where x is 0, y is 8. So change in y, we're going up 8, and we're changing x, we're going over 2. And that would be 4. So C has the largest slope out of those four. All right. I hope that um, this was helpful and that you take your time going through and improving your score as you practice CLT math practice test number two. Catch you later, Cobra.